Hello, my name is uh, Professor Christian Güger from the University of Copenhagen and I'm also one of the directors of the Safe Seas Network. And I'm here today to speak about the relationship between maritime security and the Anthropocene. And talking about the Anthropocene is quite important in terms of thinking what kind of requirements there will be for maritime security forces in the future. And in saying maritime security forces, this can be Coast Guard navies or uh, other seagoing forces. So the question that I like to address today is uh, how do developments such as climate change will impact us in the future and how should we uh, adjust strategies etc in this regard. I'm going to speak for about uh, 10 to 12 minutes here today and the question that I'm addressing is what will be the future challenges for naval forces in the Anthropocene, in the changing environment of the Anthropocene. And to do so, I like to first of all talk a little bit uh, what is meant by the Anthropocene or how do I conceive of it here today. I'm aware it's quite a contested term, but I'm going to reduce it basically to three uh, trends. And the first one is increased human activity at sea. The second one, climate change, in particular sea level rise. And then thirdly, the growing attention given to marine conservation efforts and the protection of the oceans. So what are the consequences of these developments for maritime security forces? I then like to very quickly talk about uh, maritime security and how we can develop a framework for maritime security to answer that uh, question then think a little bit about uh, what the consequences of climate change are for blue crimes, then speak about the uh, operational challenges that this produces. So that's our menu here today. So let's get started. The Anthropocene, what are we dealing with? The first thing uh, that we need to consider is that over the past 50 years, human activity at sea has accelerated and that has been nicely shown in a, in a recent study. And you see here the graphic that summarizes uh, that study. You can basically see how all of the uh, activities in a, in a radical manner uh, go up. And that in includes various areas of uh, exploitation at sea, but also increased shipping, uh, increasing infrastructures at sea, such as submarine data cable. So this is the first development uh, that I would like here to cover with the term Anthropocene. Perhaps the most dramatic uh, developments that we're going to see in the future are uh, linked to sea level rise. And the climate change predictions here are relatively straightforward. And you see one of the graphs here in the background. And uh, depending on uh, what kind of scenario will play out here, uh, we are basically looking at quite significant higher sea levels. And uh, that on the one side implies that certain areas might become uninhabitable, but it also implies a serious risk of contamination through salt water in, uh, in areas close, close to the sea. And let's not forget that a vast majority of the human population lives close uh, to the sea. But climate change also implies more uh, extreme weather events and higher waves. That quite obviously implies we are going to see more disasters, uh, more people affected by it, but also uh, a much more difficult seagoing uh, environment for merchant uh, traffic, but quite obviously also for, uh, for maritime security forces. Last but not least, we should also keep in mind that there is a growing attention to the dramatic state that the oceans are actually in. 
And because of that, there's an increasing number of uh, conservation efforts all around the world. And marine protected areas is one example for that. The idea to conduct spatial planning and then reserve areas that are protected environments. But this is only one example. We're also talking about other uh, new environmental laws which are created to protect the oceans. Think about the Ballast Water Convention, for instance, uh, that tries to uh, prevent uh, invasive species uh, reaching uh, new, new areas. Now, why is that important? Well, these conservation efforts, the new rules that are being made uh, to protect the oceans will need to be enforced in one way or the other. That will create new demands for uh, maritime security forces. It is, of course, largely on the constabulatory spectrum of tasks, but uh, there will be new pressures on current forces to enforce the law at sea. So these are the core developments uh, that we can capture with the term Anthropocene. Now let's look at how this is likely to affect maritime security. And uh, to do that, it's actually quite useful to have a solid framework for how to think about maritime security. And in my uh, current conceptualization, maritime security looks something like this. There are three core dimensions of maritime security. The first one being interstate uh, disputes, rivalries, interstate uh, matters. The second one being extremist violence uh, at sea, sometimes also called maritime terrorism, but I find that term actually less helpful because it is not always clear who and what uh, terrorism actually refers to. So extremist viol uh, violence at sea, here think about the recent attacks in Maldives or uh, the spillover of the Yemeni conflict into international shipping lanes. The third uh, dimension of the maritime security triangle is blue crime. And uh, here it's quite useful, as we've shown in a recent paper published together with uh, Tim Edmonds in Marine Policy, three dimensions of blue crime. The first one concerns crimes against mobility. And uh, here the target of crime is uh, shipping or what moves uh, at sea. And paradigmatically, this is piracy. The second category are criminal flows. Here, uh, the crime is committed in, in quite a different manner as it is large, the sea is largely used as a transit space. Smuggling, narcotic smuggling, but also human trafficking or people smuggling uh, should be seen as included in this category. The last category are environmental crimes. And here, paradigmatically, we should think about uh, IUU fishing, illegal uh, fishing in its various forms, but indeed that also other crimes committed uh, where the harm is caused actually at sea. So the environment, so to say, is the victim of those crimes. So it can also be um, pol pollution or you can even think about uh, oil spills in, in, in that sense such as the, uh, the reason also in Mauritius. So this gives us a framework of how to think about maritime security and what different kind of dimensions are at stake. Now let's use that framework and ask how each of these dimensions will be affected by the anthropocenic trends that I've outlined before. Now, if we are looking here in particular at blue crimes, we can make out uh, the following trends and uh, potential impacts. The Anthropocene, in particular sea level uh, rise, will create new economic pressures. And that will likely imply that there are more and new incentives 
to actually engage in blue crimes. That can be potentially significant. We know that the economic dislocation is one of the drivers of engaging in criminal activities or supporting criminal networks. The Anthropocene also implies uh, that there will be increasing food insecurity due to the decline of uh, ocean biodiversity, in particular fish. Um, and this will create new pressures on, uh, on other areas. So we already see this happening in the Pacific, for instance, where fishermen that used to fish uh, in Vietnam or in Southeast Asia increasingly penetrate these areas and uh, commit fishery crimes there. The third dimension to, to look at uh, is the fact that sea level rise is already creating tensions between states. So in the long run, we are likely to look at more disputed uh, borders, in particular uh, when more exploitation opportunities uh, will arise. And uh, why is that important here in the context of crime? Uh, we know uh, it's, it's very well documented that it is particularly in these disputed areas or in these gray zone areas that uh, crime thrives in these, in these areas. Sea level rise will also create new uninhabited areas. Perhaps not permanently, but uh, in, in a way that uh, people will not live there on a permanent base. And that, of course, uh, provides opportunities for new hubs to, uh, to facilitate uh, crimes, new transit stations, particularly for narcotics, uh, but also for people smuggling, and so on. The link between climate change and migration has been uh, researched heavily. We need to be a little bit cautious, uh, uh, cautious here in what way climate change is actually a driver for migration. But then nonetheless, we can expect that there will be increasing uh, migration patterns across the sea. And that will always uh, also come with illicit activities, uh, people smuggling, human trafficking, and so on. Quite a number of studies have, have looked at the relationship between climate change and instability. And uh, all those studies are not fully conclusive here there is a clear indication that we are looking at ahead at uh, times which we were going to see a little bit more trouble, in particular in the global south. And as we can see in the Yemen conflict, there's the potential that this political instability spills over to the sea right, and therefore impacts maritime security. But it also uh, implies that there's less resources for law enforcement at sea. So to say the Somali piracy problem that you have a state that cannot fully enforce what goes uh, on and monitor what goes on in their sea. Last but not least, um, thinking about the increased con uh, conversation, the conservation efforts um, this will come with new laws and new regulations, and that implies we're also looking at a new spectrum of, uh, of blue crimes in the future and new forms of criminalization. So this is one set of impacts of, uh, of how climate change, the Anthropocene, will change maritime security in the not so distant future. So what will that imply? for maritime security forces. There's a number of uh, impacts here, and we can distinguish at least three of them. There are more, but let's focus on what is the most important here. The first concerns uh, that also maritime security forces will be faced with the challenge of climate change, of sea level rise, of more extreme weather events, and so on. And that can have like potential consequences of the uh, infrastructure. The U US Navy actually uh, conducted one of the first uh, reviews and uh, suggested in that review that the majority of their infrastructures, ports, harbors, jetties, uh, and so on will be affected in one way or the other. 
And that can also imply the deterioration of buildings and uh, the structures being used uh, in, in maritime security forces. It will imply higher maintenance costs for sure, but it will also imply new protective structures are being put in place, uh, hardening measures will likely be needed, and in some cases uh, installations will also have to be relocated as they will not be longer uh, useful. If we are looking at seagoing capacity, then the pressure created by increasing wave heights and extreme weather events implies that more and stronger capabilities will be needed, but also dedicated training uh, for this. And uh, paradoxically, um, sea level rise might also create new shallow waters, uh, and that potentially also creates uh, new um, demands on capabilities. Now, there's also a changing pattern of the operational task spectrum that maritime security forces will will face in the, in the future. And that is, first of all, linked to the new patterns of blue crime that I've just described, the new forms of criminalization. So there will be more to do uh, for maritime security forces. But then at the same time, extreme weather events uh, will also imply that there will be more other activities, uh, like, such as disaster relief, but then potentially also more search and rescue uh, missions. And here, quite obviously, uh, we are talking, we're talking about better preparedness, a new planning tools, uh, increased maritime surveillance and better maritime domain awareness uh, in reaction to these problems. So the operational spectrum of tasks is likely to become broader in the, in the future. And that will have to be featured in, into strategies, doctrines, trainings, uh, and uh, so on. So this is basically then what we are uh, looking at in terms of uh, the consequences of the Anthropocene of climate change, the thought of a bit more broadly. Now, let me conclude here at, uh, at this point. Uh, first of all, what, uh, what I was arguing here is uh, I think we need we require dedicated assessments in the future of how different maritime security forces will be impacted by these trends. This should result then in a more preparedness, uh, dedicated training, but also investment plans. Looking at it from a broader picture, I think we also need to get much better at integrating actually security concerns and conservation efforts. And I think marine protected areas are a good example here. As conservation efforts increase and more and more of these protected areas uh, are established, this also will imply that laws need to be enforced. So it's important to work towards better synergies uh, between security, policing the sea, and protecting the sea through environmental regulation. So this is then the, the big conclusion and I uh, hope you found this uh, uh, interesting here today. If you want to learn more, uh, please visit our website at www.safeseas.net. You'll find a broad range of interesting material there on maritime security and blue crime. And please also uh, join me on Twitter at CUEGA. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>